Hey, what's up, photo fam? It's your boy Eddie Herrera here, also known as Eddie's Photo. How y'all doing today? Today, y'all already know we got another thumbnail video. Y'all have been asking for it. Y'all have been asking for it. But in today's video, it's actually gonna be kind of a quick one. We are doing a Sidemen React thumbnail. Pretty easy, pretty easy. There's not too much going on. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alrighty, we are in Photoshop. You gotta use Photoshop. If you don't have it, try to get it. If not, you can follow along. There are a lot of similar steps in other programs and I kind of talk a little bit fast. So if you need to slow this video down, well, do so or pause if you need to. Alrighty, so we're gonna come up here to Photoshop. File, new. And then I already have a preset made. If you don't already have a thumbnail preset made, go ahead and make one. It is going to be 1920 by 1080. It is going to be horizontal, which means sideways orientation. Make sure it is on pixels. The resolution is going to be 72. RGB mode, 8-bit, everything else you can leave alone. You can go ahead, come down here and hit create and you are going to have your blank canvas. If we take a look at the Sidemen Reacts, they are a huge channel, 3.7 million subscribers. That's that's a lot of subscribers. I'm, I'm not there yet, I'm not there yet. But not to be rude, obviously if you look at these thumbnails, there's not a lot going on, which is exactly what you wanna do. Because with thumbnails, usually, less is more unless you're trying to make a big old fancy thumbnail like I have in the past but you you get the gist you're literally going to need two things to start you're going to need a screenshot of a reaction you did while you were filming it or you can fake it a lot of thumbnails are faked who would have guessed and the other thing you're going to need is a screenshot or image from the reaction video Alrighty, on my second channel, which, yeah, I have a second channel because I do stream on Twitch, and because I stream on Twitch, I have a Clips channel from the live stream. Links will be in the description to the second channel if you want to check it out. But anyway, because I have that channel, I have to make a lot of really quick and catchy thumbnails, and this is exactly an example of that. But anyway, I reacted to the Batman trailer. So I quickly grabbed a screenshot from the trailer. I wanted to grab something kind of interesting. So to place it on this canvas, I'm going to go file, place embedded, find that screenshot in your file folder, click on it. You're going to make it take up pretty much the entire frame. If you know what side of the thumbnail you are going to be at, the actual reaction side, you could just put the actual image on the other side. So I'm going to put it over here for now. Now I'm going to grab the reaction photo. So I'm going to go file, place embedded again and find that photo. Since I normally have all the tools ready to go for a reaction photo, since I'm a photographer, so I just snap, boom, I'm done. I went ahead and posed a few. And for this one, I'm going to choose, I'm gonna choose this one. That is perfect. I'm a little bit out of focus. My eyes are mainly in focus and my headband. So for that, I'm gonna go filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And that is going to add some more details in your photo. If you don't wanna do it just yet, you can add it at the end to everything which I am about to show you. So there we go. So now I got both photos placed on the canvas. Now I need to do a cutout of myself. I'm gonna come down here to the layers panel. I'm gonna right click on my reaction photo, hit rasterize layer. That is going to allow you to manipulate or Photoshop it any way you want. I'm gonna come over here to the object selection tool, hit select subject, and there we go. It did a pretty good selection of myself. As you can see right here, it missed a little bit. I'm gonna scroll down here to the bottom where you see this, right click on it, and make sure you are selected to the pen tool. Yes, we're using the pen tool from now on. A little bit scary, but we gotta do it. I'm gonna click wherever I want the selection. So it's gonna start at the edge of my shirt and then just drag a line and you're just gonna grab wherever you think your t-shirt is. It can be a little rough, but you wanna get it as close as possible. Then you're going to close the loop just like this. It's gonna turn blue once you close the loop. Come over here, hit selection. Feather radius can be zero. Make sure it is add to selection and hit okay. I'm gonna fast forward this real quick to show you what it looks like once it's done. If you see any scraggly lines here, like it's a little bit like warpy, then try to make a somewhat straight but still curved line on top, right on the edge. Close that selection and then hit add to selection. Okay, and then it'll be a little bit better. 
Alrighty, I got my selection down pretty close. It's not gonna grab all of my hair. That's gonna be pretty hard to do. If you want to grab every single strand of hair, you can go ahead. But if you don't have that much time for thumbnails, then go ahead and just do your best. All right, now that I have my selection, come up here and you're gonna want to be on a selection tool again. Right click on yourself, hit layer via copy. Turn off everything in the back and that is going to show you what you look like. If you see any weird strokes here, it looks kind of transparent. You can grab the eraser tool, make it very small and kind of just get rid of it. Or you could take the pen tool, grab what you don't want, make that loop, hit selection, hit new selection, and then just hit delete and that'll get rid of what's in that area. Cool, there we go. I'm gonna take the other layer, this one right here, and then go ahead and lock it. That way I can't move it. And then I'm gonna just turn it off and put it to the bottom. That way I can't touch it, move it, do anything to it. And as you can see in these, there's a tiny white line on the edge of each person. KSI and Harry. Not, the, not this thing, not the lion. Alrighty, back to Photoshop. I got this right over here. This chair is very squeaky, love that. Take that layer, you're gonna name it me, cause that's you. Um, come down over here to the FX panel, right over here. Click on it, hit stroke. It is going to create a thin white line. Don't worry about how scraggly it looks over here. We can fix that in a second. You're gonna go over to size and choose what size you want. So we want a very thin line. So right there is what looks good for me. Five pixels, I'm gonna hit okay. And now the hair white looks all like doo-doo. I'm gonna come over here, click the lasso tool. I'm going to make a selection really quick over what I don't want. I'm gonna make a loop. Hit delete. I'm gonna do that everywhere that I do not want a selection. So you're gonna wanna hug the edge of your hair or wherever it's doing this on the image. Hit delete, just like that, looking a lot better. Alrighty, now the final steps. There is a color behind them. And on this one, there's an arrow. Because this is kind of hard to tell what it is, I am going to need an arrow. Alrighty, let's start with the color. Very, very simple. You wanna turn off this image for now and you're gonna wanna be true to yourself. You're either gonna do this a lot in your channel or just not very much at all. I personally wanna keep this a consistent color in my channel. I personally like bluish purples to teal hues. Come over down here to the paint bucket tool where where is it? It's gonna be on this gradient tool. So right click on this gradient tool if you don't see the paint bucket tool or just hit G, come down here, click on this foreground color right here. It's gonna bring up the color picker. Bring that color all the way to the top right. That's gonna give you the most saturated color available. And then you just wanna pick a color. I'm either gonna do teal or I am very indecisive right now. Let's go with purple. That is good enough for me right now. All right, now I'm gonna move the Batman a little bit over here, but what is this? This is really thin. I don't want this. Come over here. You're gonna wanna pick the rectangle selection tool. And then I wanna slice a little bit off this image of Batman. I'm gonna name it Batman real quick. Right click, rasterize layer. Select what I wanna cut off. I wanna do probably around my eye right here. Hit delete. And obviously if you need to move this a little bit over, you totally can. All right, now to spice it up a little bit, I'm going to go down here, hit the paint bucket tool, gradient tool. I'm gonna click on the second one that is going to have a color like white, black, and then go to a very transparent color. I'm gonna click on this left tab right here, click the color, hit white, hit okay. Now I'm gonna go up here, click on this little orb looking thing that's gonna be a type of gradient. It's gonna basically create a ball and I'm gonna put it right underneath me. That basically makes me look like I'm glowing. So we're good with that. Now the final element for our thumbnail is gonna be an arrow because at first glance you might not be like, whoa, what is this? I went ahead and found an arrow. I'm gonna make an arrow pointing at the Batman right there. Now the last step is going to be merging all the layers and basically sharpening it, all of it. I'm gonna grab the bottom layer Hold shift, top layer, hold alt or option, drag it up. It's gonna create a copy of every layer you have. Right click on that, hit merge layers. So now I can hold shift, turn these layers off by dragging on the eyeballs. And if I drag this around, it is basically a merge layer of my thumbnail. And I have every element still in the background in case I need to edit something later in time. All right, now the very last thing, I'm gonna go up here, hit filter, 
sharpen unsharp mask that is going to make everything look a little bit a little bit crispier you can go overload and do this don't do that but you can but normally i do around 50 in between 50 and 100 depending on how blurry your photos actually are I'm gonna do 50 because I already sharpened it earlier. Hit okay. Again, if you wanna change this in post, turn this off, click on all the layers, turn those back on. Say you're like, hey, I didn't like the purple. I don't like purple that much. Click on that background layer. You can either hit control U and just change the hue of it. That's going to do whatever. If you want it really Sidemen Reaxy, then make it red. Say you're like, hey, I wanted to make this a little bit bigger. Totally up to you. I do things differently personally, but if you really want to stick to the Sidemen Reacts meta, then zoom it in and there you have your thumbnail. If you enjoyed today's video or if this really helped you out, don't forget to drop a like, comment, and consider subscribing. It's totally free and you can unsubscribe whenever you want. Thank you guys so much for watching. We are on the road to 500 subscribers right now. We are about to hit it. If we can hit 500 subscribers by my birthday, which is December 8th, that would mean a lot to me. That is a month and a half. And we, we could totally do it. We could totally do it. Share this video with your friends. Anybody in the graphic community who wants to learn how to make thumbnails, let them know. Thank you guys so much. I will catch you guys in the next video whenever that is. Take it easy, guys. Peace out. Bye-bye.